Julia and welcome back to my channel. I finished my art quilt this week and I wanted to share with you how I did this. Now I'm a newbie at quilting and I'm sure there's a lot easier ways of doing this. So I'm kind of just making it up as I go along but you know what that's part of the journey. Um, if you missed my last video I did the piece work using a gentle curve method and I used um, Jean Wells method. She has a couple um, videos on YouTube and also has some wonderful books and I will link all that down below for you. I'll also link the video where I did my curved um, method and did this big piece and I cut pieces of that bigger piece to finish my, my mini quilt. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. I drew my art quilt out on my iPad. This is the app Procreate and it has graph paper. So I drew it out on graph paper, but if you just have regular graph paper, use that. Um, I just thought this worked really well. And then I was able to list um, the dimensions that I needed to cut and also the sequence or number this, them in sequence of how I wanted to sew them. I'm just using a Kona um, quilt fabric for the main background and this is in the color snow. A lot of the background it shows on this quilt. I wanted to see if I can get some free motion quilting done and really wanted my quilting to pop. And so that's my, what I had in mind here. I did want that lime green color to, to show. There's just a little bit of it on this piece. So I'm just cutting my first section out here. This is the largest section of that patchwork on my quilt. And then labeled all my other pieces. Everything's cut out now. And I also have some tiny strips that I wanted to add and that's what those are on the side there. That piece that I just showed you was my leftover piece and I did make several projects and I'll show you some pictures of my other projects that I made at the end. I'm taking the quarter inch seam allowances here and I'm just joining my pieces just kind of going by my little graph that I had drawn out. Now I wanted to add this tiny pop of color and that strip is cut three-fourths of an inch. I did show how I did this in that other, other video as well. I'm, I'm just doing my gentle curve there. And I'm gonna be taking this to my sewing machine now and I'm gonna be adding that tiny strip. Um, I don't pin for this. Everything is just lined up on the right-hand side and then I just reposition every about every inch or so. Now I um, went ahead and I pressed. This is one thing that I'd made a mistake on is some of my, my things aren't pressed to the, to the dark so they do show. Um, I certainly have work to do here. I'm drawing on my stitch line now and now I'm cutting a quarter of an inch away from that stitch line. Kind of hard to see that stitch line but I did draw that on. Some of this will completely disappear in the seam or just get really close to that initial stitch line. I love this pop of color and such an easy, easy way of doing this. And now I'm laying that little curvy strip there on top of my next section and just taking my rotary color cutter and adding that same curve on this strip. Back to my sewing machine. I do have to flip this over because I want to see that stitch line that I have drawn on and we'll be stitching right on that line making sure everything again is lining up on the right hand side. I am working with a curve here so I want to just take a few stitches about a half inch to an inch and then reposition again. And this is what it looks like just a tiny little piece of color added my next strip and I've decided I'm going to add another little strip of color to this. Doing it the same way. You can see how I did it on my little strip here. Almost done. I have one more piece I wanted to add down here. Again, using that, I'm using a heat erase pen to draw on that stitch line, um, but any kind of soluble marker or fabric marker would work. Going ahead and doing adding my curve again and we'll be adding this next strip. Now it's on to adding my borders. I added my top and bottom border first and then adding my side borders. I took a fourth inch seam allowance on this. 
and how everything all ready to go for my quilting. I have a sandwich made. I have a um, warm and natural quilt batting that I'm using and then just a backing. And I cut both of those bigger than my quilt. I'll cut them down when I'm done here, done with my quilting. I'm just adding stick pins here. I, I would normally do safety pins, but I'm on vacation with my husband for a couple months in, in a warmer climate and I just don't have all my supplies. I have the cutest little she shed though that, that I'm sewing in. If any of you are interested, I could do a little tour so you can see that. It's just really been a fun place to sew. And I'm off to my quilting. I have my walking foot on and I decided just to do that curvy quilt line or just kind of emulate the, uh, the rest of that those curvy lines. I do two parallel and then I'm going to skip about an inch or so and do um, just another direction of another curve. And then do I will go back and do another parallel to that curve about a half inch away. Super simple. I wanted to share this piece of the, that I have in this quilt is a real bubbly look and I wanted to emulate that in my free motion stitching and so I did some of my my little uh, blank or background pieces I want I just added that pebble with a free motion really loved how this turned out and it does look very similar you can see it down there on the on the right hand corner um, some of the, that really cool fabric that already has those bubbles so I'm just going around and around and just doing small sections of this. I believe I did maybe three or four sporadic on my quilt. I really thought it added a lot. Now I am, when I started, I drew my bobbin thread up and then I will tie that off and hide those threads um, in between. And here's what it looks like and you can see what that free motion stitching looked like. I did add um, holders on the back so you can put a dowel in it. All finished off. Love it. I did the binding too and I'll show, I'll link a video on how I do my binding. But this is one of another project. I did this little pouch. It's a little, little wristlet. It has a zipper in the back and I used that piece of that patchwork wavy gentle curved on, on that flap. I just really thought it turned out cute. And then I did a journal with just a strip of that. Um, you can, I'll open it up here and you can see, I just did a strip on the bottom of it. Again, just really a great way to add um, just some unique look to your projects. And it looks like you've spent so much time piecing it together, but yet when it's from a bigger piece, it really isn't. I did a couple little needle books. Um, and you can see this one, I did a, and I did an applique on both of them, one's of a tree and one's of a, a dress form. But the background I did one vertically and this one's vertically and the other one I did horizontally. So you can just do all sorts of, of great little um, things with, with your once your patchwork is done. I hope you enjoy this everybody. I hope it's given you some inspiration. Thank you all who's joined me. Have a creative week. Bye for now.